So whether it's for the holidays or summer vacation or what have you, traveling with a baby can be pretty stressful, but you got this, you can do it, it's all in here. And we're gonna talk about how you can do it coming right up. Hey guys, Andrew here with Dad Verb, where we chat fatherhood and share our thoughts on family-related products. Today we're gonna to be discussing the whole experience of traveling with a baby and breaking some tips down into five different stages. The first stage is gonna be booking and then checking in, getting through security, uh, the actual flight itself, and then arrival. So let's get into booking, right? The first thing you wanna identify is when is your baby's witching hour? That's that hour when they're gonna be the most fussy, the most tired, they're gonna be whining a lot, and you want to not book a flight in the witching hour because that's, that's not gonna be very easy for you. Personally for me, I like uh, choosing a flight that's really early in the morning or super late at night, kind of those bookends, nothing really in the middle. And red eyes are really good too, because that is a, a great opportunity for the baby to sleep and even for you to just kind of sleep throughout the entire flight. Upon buying the ticket, you're gonna wanna determine how you want to travel. So that's gonna be, uh, do you wanna be holding or wearing the baby throughout the entire flight? Or do you wanna buy a separate ticket so that you can put the car seat and the baby uh, in that separate seat? That's gonna require a little bit more money, but regardless, that's, a, that's a, a something that you're gonna wanna determine. And after you buy the seat, go ahead and call the airline and make sure that the baby is on your reservation, uh, if, especially if you didn't buy a separate seat. Make sure that the baby is on the reservation so that they know that you are flying with the baby. Uh, the baby will need some sort of identification, and if you're flying internationally, yes, the baby does need a passport. So you gotta get all the identification uh, documents in place beforehand. So when you're checking into the airport, you wanna to try to make everything as minimal as possible. I try to check as much as I can in. Uh, all baby things like strollers and car seats, they do travel free, so you don't have to pay any sort of bag fee for that, which is great. If you are checking in a stroller, you don't want anything too big or bulky, so you might wanna rethink your, your travel system, what you're using. Uh, in my opinion, the, the Kiko Lightweight and the Pocket Stroller are probably the best options for travel. They're super lightweight, they fold down to uh, a good size. Uh, we use the Yuppa Baby Vista and Mesa, so that's kind of our travel system. System, which is a little bit heavier and a little bit bigger, but we did buy the uh, the travel bags and that has helped us. We like it, it works for us, but think about which strollers you are gonna be traveling with. After I'm done with the check-in process, the way I like to do it is, is I wear the baby. I think it's an absolute must. Wearing the baby is a huge thing, so get a baby Bjorn, a ring sling, whatever you need. I have the baby in the front, a backpack in the back, and if I'm traveling with a car seat, I'll hold that as kind of like a third option. Uh, and that's how you can do it solo. If you have a partner, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. So after you check in, you're gonna have to make your way over to the security line the TSA security checkpoint. That's arguably the most stressful part for me. I, I hate it, but I will say that the biggest piece of advice that I can give you for that is wear your baby. I said it before, but it's so important that you wear your baby as opposed to carrying all this stuff. Wearing your baby is just gonna make it a lot easier. Now, when you're going through security, think about also what you're gonna wear. You don't wanna be wearing all these bangles and all this stuff around you. Just wear like sweats. It's just so much easier, especially on the flight. You wanna be comfortable, man. I will say TSA pre-check is a very helpful thing, especially if you are traveling with the baby. You don't have to worry about taking your shoes off or removing a laptop or anything like that. You can just walk right through. It's like $85 and your TSA approved for five years. So I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. All right, so you checked in, you got through security, you're at your gate now, you're probably getting some shade thrown at you because they're like, oh man, I hope I'll sit next to that baby. But the flight itself is entirely a mental game. Now, if you have a partner, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you, but the baby's gonna do what the baby's gonna do. If, if, if he or she cries, they cry. If he or she is chill, then they're gonna be chill. But it's all about how you perceive things and how you react to things and how you keep mentally sound. That's, that's what's gonna get you through the flight. So you board your flight, you're walking down the aisle, you might get some compliments, very cute baby, or you might get some stares, like, oh man, just shut that thing up, make sure you don't cry during the flight. Regardless, just forget it, block it out of your mind. Go ahead and find your seat. If you have a car seat, uh, install the car seat. And also I do wanna note that you gotta make sure that your car seat is TSA compliant and that it is suited to be strapped into an airplane seat. Uh, not all car seats uh, are able to do that. So I forgot to mention that, keep that in mind. So your biggest fear is that the baby's gonna freak out. I get it, that's why you're watching this video. So just some general tips uh, on takeoff and descent, suck, 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 right? You want the baby drinking, uh, give him a bottle, give him the breast, do what you gotta do and make sure the baby's sucking to help uh, relieve the pressure because you can't just tell a baby to chew gum or go like this ah, 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 to like regulate the pressure in their head. Uh, so sucking on milk uh, is probably gonna be their best bet. Now I will say that not all babies are affected by that and if they're sleeping, just let them sleep, uh, especially if the plane is in descent. Uh, don't wake them up and say, okay, you gotta suck now so you can drink. Just let them sleep through it. And if they're sleeping through it, just fine, then just leave them alone. So picking your seat is really important for your flight strategy. We tend to like the aisle 
aisles. That way one of us can just pick up Henry, go up and down the aisles, go hang out in the back galley area. Uh, it's just better for the baby to keep him entertained, give him something new to look at because sitting can be pretty draining. There is a blogger that we know named Amber Filler up and she gave a really good piece of advice where she says she actually likes the window. Uh, that way if the baby does start crying, she can just kind of turn her body toward the baby and the window and almost have like kind of like a private little area so that she can console the baby. Again, we like the aisle so that we don't have to get up if we're sitting in the window seat and try to trouble people to get past them. You choose your strategy, but those are kind of, you know, the options that you have. Flying is a scary thing, and unfortunately, as a parent, your options are limited. The best you can do is just try to entertain the baby, feed the baby, or walk around with him or her. But again, it's a mental game, and depending on how you react to the baby, it's gonna be fine. And don't worry, there are a lot more people on that flight than you, than you realize that are much more empathetic to your situation. So just take that into consideration. So you land, you got through the flight, and that's awesome, but sometimes taxiing and deplaning can take a long time. So you might want to consider a flight that's a little bit more toward the middle or front as opposed to the back because there have been times where we're sitting at the gate and it's just taking forever for people to get off of this plane and the baby starts getting antsy. They're awake, the lights are on, people are chattering and the baby's kind of like, okay, what do we do now? And the longer that takes, the more stressed you get. So, uh, you know, back of the plane, it was a little bit more stressful, uh, so just keep that in mind. The last thing I do want to touch on is something that I'm not as well versed in, and that's jet lag. The most that we've flown when it comes to time differences for Henry is about two hours. Uh, but for people who are traveling long distances that are like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hours, uh, jet lag is something that you're going to want to factor in because that's going to throw off the sleep patterns, like not just for you, but your baby, like even more so. It's going to be intense. So I'm going to put a link down below on, on how to uh, deal with jet lag and something that you might want to consider if you are doing a long, big international flight or something like that. So again, links down below on jet lag, TSA compliant car seats, and all that kind of stuff that you might find valuable. Uh, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and smack that like button that's down below. And for more vlogs and reviews just like this one, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. Have a safe trip. God bless you guys. You got this. Take care.